um, and it's going to be a special night. Uh, oh, Don Blaha is here with us, uh, inductee class of 2011. Don? Randy, excuse the uh, interruption, but uh, there's someone in the lobby who wants to speak. Well, who, who is he, Don? Uh, he says his name is Casey. Well, does he have a last name? Uh, he said he, he doesn't have a last name. Well, where is he from? He's from a, a cornfield. A cornfield? Where? In Iowa. He came from a cornfield in Iowa here tonight? Yes. Do you want to speak? Yes. But he, he didn't come on a plane and he's upset. Well, why is he upset? Well, Shoeless Joe and the guys in the cornfield won't let him play. Why is that? He keeps striking out. Uh, perhaps he's faced Brantford too often. <laughs> wow. well, maybe we have Crane Paul Whitaker in the house. Maybe they could help him with his swing. But if he really wants to talk, have him come up. Well, Ronnie, he says he keeps hearing voices. Uh oh, that's not a good thing. According to him, the voices say, "If you, if you have it, he will come." And I think he's referring to this Hall of Fame uh, ceremony tonight. Well, let's have him come up then, Doc. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a visitor from the cornfields from Iowa. This is unexpected, but bear with us for a minute or two, and we'll just see what he has to say. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my uh, privilege to be with you here tonight, both from Iowa, from three places, from Iowa, where I hail from, uh, from Cooperstown, where I work, and from Schenectady, where I live. Um, and uh, so my name is Tim Wiles. I'm the Director of Research at the Baseball Hall of Fame Library. Uh, and I have been reciting Casey at the Bat uh, for crowds since 1996, probably around 2,000 times. This is the 125th year for Casey at the Bat, written in 1888 by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. I've only been in it for about 19 years myself. Now I'm going to recite Casey for you. It takes five or six minutes. There are some things that I need a little bit of help with in this poem. So I'm hoping that we got some good spirit out here tonight to help me do Casey at the bat. There are three times in the poem where I need to hear a really loud, really wild, raucous cheer. Let's hear what you've got, folks. Yay! Thank you. That's very, very good. If you can cheer that well, let me hear how well you can boo. Boo. Very, very good. Thank you. Like most crowds, better at the boo. Uh, now, you're welcome to boo whenever you'd like in this poem, but there is one particular spot where I'm hoping that you'll boo to help me out. My hands will go down the one time that I want to boo and up the three times that I want to cheer. So my hands will go down and the cue is there went up a muffled roar. So that's when the boo will come with the muffled roar. Now, I know that we have more than one umpire in the room, uh, but I'd like us all to play the part of the umpire. The umpire is going to call not one, but two strikes on the mighty Casey. So when I give the umpire signal, if you'd all call out together, strike one, please. Strike one. one. Okay, now that was pretty good. Uh, but for strike two, let's work on the timing and the volume. Strike two. Very good, very good. Umpire school tonight. Uh, thank you. And your hardest line tonight is the line where I need to ask you to sound like an echo. And it goes like this. Fraud, cried the Madden Thousands. And echo answer. Fraud. Great, thank you. <laughs> Thanking you for calling me a fraud. <laughs> Casey at the back. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which rings eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the back. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon this stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the back. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all. 
and Blake, the much despised, he tore the cover off the ball. And when the <coughs> dust had lifted and they saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hug in third. Then from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. Yay! It rumbled in the valley, it rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to your cheers, Yay! he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded Yay! when he wiped them on his shirt. And while the rising pitcher ground the ball to his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air. But Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike down, the umpire said. From the benches, black with people, there went up a muffled roar. <laughs> like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Right. Fraud, cried the maddened thousands, and echo answered, Fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his back on the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. Somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Thank you, folks. Yeah.